Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, I've been thinking about starting a, a company that would essentially book flights for bald people. I'd call it Receding Airlines. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Keep Up the Fire, The Boxer Rebellion from Worthington. Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. In Keep Up the Fire, the Boxer Rebellion from Worthington, a player attempts to hold off the forces of the Boxers and the King Emperor as they attempt to take the legation of the Western powers during the Boxer Rebellion. Essentially, there are two game boards. There's a game board which details the legation and various paths leading uh, from the Chinese forces into the legation. And then you also have the path of the relief army marching from the coast toward the city where it can hopefully relieve the defenders. So the Boxer Rebellion of uh, roughly 1900 AD was you had some incipient nationalism among the uh, Chinese. There was a humiliation of being what they believed was exploited by the Western powers and the Japanese, and they sought to expel them from their legation uh, compound in Beijing. The Western nations, of course, were Britain, the United States, France, uh, Italy, Russia, Austria-Hungary, and of course the Japanese were there as well. Each of these Western powers in Japan have their respective strengths marked on a uh, board which details exactly how powerful they are, and they are placed on each of the walls, north, south, east, and west. The compound itself has various tracks which lead from the periphery to the center of that compound as the Western powers are trying to keep them out. The Western powers place two uh, of these nations on, uh, and, their, and, their, and their security forces on the different sides in order to try to keep back the forces of the Chinese, and they each have various uh, powers or uh, disadvantages that will happen as they are placed uh, in those locations. Now, the player is going to actually go ahead and build two different decks, a deck for the legation board and a deck for the relief army board. Um, each of these are going to have different things, and they're going to have different phases in the game which they affect. Essentially, every turn there's going to be three phases. There's going to be a legation phase, there's going to be a relief army phase, and there's going to be a housekeeping phase. During the legation phase, players are going to draw a card from the legation deck. Now, this card typically is going to say what forces are coming at the uh, legation compound and from what direction. So it will either be a boxer force, which tend to be a little bit weaker, or you can have one of the imperial forces coming for you. You're, it's also going to tell you the respective strength of that force. So if there is a track that does not have a, a force already on it, you would add that track at the end of the. You would add that force at the end of the track, and then you would also make sure its strength represents, uh, of course, what how strong that particular Chinese army was. Now there may be some special text on the card, but critically there's going to be a number on that card. And that number is going to be how many actions the legation player can uh, use. So essentially he can uh, fire at range if the Chinese armies are far enough away. They can spend um, uh, their actions in order to fire them. Typically you want to roll a die and it, wants to, it needs to be greater than the uh, strength of that unit in order to knock it down. After you roll a die, you would roll a second die to see exactly how many spaces it gets knocked down. Now, you can also do a melee attack. Now, if ever the uh, Chinese force is at the gates or in the compound, you would roll a melee die. Essentially, you roll the die, 
and that is casualties for both the Chinese and for one of your forces. So you'd roll the die, you find out what that number is, and then you may see if there's any mitigating factors. For instance, the Chinese um, boxers are, are, you know, they're they're going to have um, some issues there, depending on if they're at the gate. You know, you, there's also going to be some mitigating factors, or if they're in the compound, there's mitigating factors. You're going to have more or less casualties, and then sometimes too, some of the various uh, 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 nations may have, you know. You roll let, casualties count for less against you. Now you also have fortifications, and you can take casualties on the fortifications. But if the fortifications are at zero, then you must take it on the respective strength of your um, nation. Now you can also spend actions to increase your fortifications, and occasionally there'll be some other things you can do with your actions as well. Now after you've taken all of your actions, all of the Chinese forces advance one space along the track and then you have the opportunity to move and reshuffle any of your forces uh, around the compound that you want because again, in certain situations, some of the powers will be more beneficial to have in certain places. Next you go to the relief board. You draw a card there and what you're going to do typically is you have a cup that has the Chinese forces uh, in it um, and some of the cards may tell you to add forces to the cup or take forces out of the cup but then you have to take one of the forces after you've drawn the card you take one of the forces and you lay that force on top of the relief army uh, token that shows that that is currently the army that they are having to deal with as they advance. Now your card may indicate that the Chinese force attacks you. Now if that happens, you go ahead and you have to roll a die, and you're trying to hit higher than the number printed on that army. If you hit equal, it's a draw, and so generally nothing may happen, but there may be some, some, some things that occur. But if it's less, you're going to take losses, and depending on how much less, you're going to take losses. And a loss generally means you have to lose some of your speed or lose some of your power. Next you have the Relief Column Command segment, and again you are told how many actions you get, how many commands you get. You can either attack the army that you're on, in which case again you're trying to roll a die higher than uh, what their current strength is. If that happens, that army is set aside. You can attempt to advance, essentially you roll a die and you're trying to get higher than a six. If you can get higher than a six on a six-sided die with modifiers, then you are allowed to advance one step closer to Beijing. If you fail, however, sometimes nothing happens, but sometimes if you're in uh, certain zones, danger zones, then you may take losses. Now, you have, as I say, a combat track and a speed track. For actions, you can actually increase on that track, meaning you're stronger when you fight the Chinese, or you have a better chance of scoring higher than a 6 on the advanced track. Now, if at any time you actually make it to Beijing, congratulations, you've won the game. Otherwise, you have to go ahead and uh, take the Chinese token on top of the uh, relief army or in its disorganized zone and put it back in the cup. And if there is a, another card in the legation, you have to draw that and you start the next round. So you go back and forth trying to defend the compound from these waves of Chinese attacks. You have to advance on the relief board, you have to fight off the Chinese armies there, and continually move toward Beijing. Now if ever the deck of cards uh, at the legation runs out, then you have lost the game. If ever a, uh, one of the Chinese armies succeeds in making it to the center, the fort at the center of the compound, you lose the game. If ever there are three Chinese armies within the walls of the compound, you lose the game. But if you are successful in getting your relief army all the way to Beijing, then you win! Keep up the fire, the Boxer Rebellion! So, Keep Up the Fire of the Boxer Rebellion. This is another States of Siege game that's been recently reprinted by Worthington. And it was, I believe, a Victory Points game originally. A uh, very interesting history here, the Boxer Rebellion. So, like all States of Siege's games, uh, it, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's a game of trying to hold back your enemies while you are trying to um, spend actions in the best, most economical way you can to take chances. Now, again... You've got two kinds of fighting. You got the fire, and then you've got the melee, which is more risky, but you got to do sometimes if if that army is that close. I particularly like here how the different Western armies and the Japanese army are. Um, they have uh, different abilities. They're kind of asymmetrical. Like for instance, I think it's the Americans and the and the French. I think have a plus one to their fire attacks, right? But then some of the countries have, like, if we're involved in a melee, we take one less casualty. So it's interesting how they have different 
aspects. And I think I think some of them, I think the Italians are like negative one to fire. So there's some negative stuff there, but it's 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 kind of interesting that they're not just the same. They have different abilities and they matter. They're 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 small abilities, but they matter. One of the things that's that's very interesting to me in this game versus a lot of the other states of siege games that I played is that second board, right? Is that relief board, the relief map. That's almost like a game in and of itself, right? And it's and it's and it's one of those things you sweat because it's hard. It's hard to make that move because you got to build up so that you're over six. And I think you can only get like a plus three modifier on that. And some of the cards will give you like a plus one modifier. So it's not easy, right? Because it's, I mean, there's luck, but you're mitigating your luck. You're trying to, but it's slow going. It is slow going to get that that army to Beijing. And meanwhile, you're just holding on by your fingernails in the compound. It's very well done. It's very fun, very interesting. Um, I love States of Siege games. And uh, this is a brilliant, beautiful production of a great game. It, you know, we, we saw from uh, Worthington, they gave us the Soviet Dawn game, States of Siege game, just not too long ago. <clears throat> and I loved that. I thought that game was phenomenal, too. And this one's cool. And it's a very different game in a lot of ways. I mean, they're both States of Siege games. But it's a very different game here because of, like I say, you got that second board, that almost second... I almost want to say a mini game, but it's integral. Um... It's fun. It's a fun game. It's a good and interesting and exciting uh, piece of history, way to play through history, and it is tough. This is a hard game. I have not beat it yet. Great game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say uh, buy it. I think you'll really get a kick out of Keep Up the Fire, the Boxer Rebellion. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we take a look at uh, military history and fun things like that. Please check out and subscribe to that channel as well. And I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, please uh, give us a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That really helps us out. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I would really like to run for president of China, but I can't. That's what G said. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Okay, so they are going to fire on that. So that's uh, three die at six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. That just really. <laughs>